This program is made possible courtesy of the Wilfred Lai Partners. For prayer, inquiry, and partnership, contact us on 0800 000 or send SMS to 23378 and our team of counselors will help you. Shalom. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to challenge you to choose to rejoice. It doesn't matter what is going on around your life. This is the day, the Bible says, that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. So the enemy had better know that we choose to rejoice in this day. Welcome to Kingdom Queen program. We are glad that you have tuned in. And I am the host of this program, Kingdom Queen uh, program. My name is Mrs. Rita Lai, the wife of Pastor Wilfred Lai, the, the center lead pastor for Bamburi CPC and the general overseer for JCC ministry globally. I am so glad that you tuned in, and I know that you are going to be blessed. If you are our partner, I want you to know that we appreciate you. We appreciate your support, and we challenge you to continue supporting us, and may the Lord grant you the desires of your heart. As you stand behind the ministry of spreading the gospel, the Lord will definitely bless you. And if you are not a partner and you are wondering how you can become one, you can call that number. It's a toll free number that is scrolling on your screen. You can call that number and you will be guided on what you need to do to become a partner. If this if JCC TV has been a blessing to you, 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 you can partner with us so that others can also be blessed as you have been blessed. And if you have any question as we continue with the program and you want to uh, ask that question, you can text us or you can call that number and somebody will be on the other side to respond to your call and we will also answer your text uh, messages. The Lord bless you. Today, I am joined to, uh, with, uh, I'm together with my co-host, Judy Mula, and I want to welcome her to greet you and to give her opening remark. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made. As Mama always says before we begin the program. And uh, in this day, we shall rejoice and glad in it because it is the day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you for choosing Kingdom Queen program. I'm Judy Mula, wife to Pastor Philip Mula. And we thank God we've been in ministry serving together with my husband, still serving together in our center, JCC Mombasa West, Mombasa West here in Kenya. And we are so glad to bring to you this program, which speaks about the pastor's wife. So keep it with us here in the studio, and I know you will be blessed at the end of the program. Karibuni sana. Thank you very much, Judy. Indeed. Kingdom Queen is a program that is geared to addressing the issues surrounding a pastor's wife. And we believe uh, the pastor's wife is going to find her place in ministry and enjoy serving the Lord, enjoy working alongside her husband. As she serves God, we, our desire is that she will do it in joy and she will be able to find fulfillment in serving the Lord. So welcome every kingdom queen out there. You are very special. You are very, uh, very uh, important in the work of God as a pastor's wife. In the studio today, we have a very special guest. Uh, and our guest today is 
Eve Masai. Eve Masai is a daughter of this house. And we thank God that she has found time to come and be with us. We welcome you to this program, uh, Eve. And I want to begin by asking you to introduce yourself and just tell us where you serve the Lord at this time. Uh, my name is Eve Masai. Uh, wife to Pastor Joseph Masai, we serve at JCC Ukunda, and I'm a mother of four, two teenagers and two uh, twins, five years old, and I'm a business lady, a professional. Uh, I have a passion for women, single, plus the married, and teenager. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is all about me. Mm, wonderful. Thank you so much and welcome. Thank you. I want to begin by asking you, Eve, you say you are a, you are, you are, you are a businesswoman, you are in that profession, um, and you are a pastor's wife. How do you handle the two roles, being a pastor's wife and being in business? Uh, it's not easy, but it is manageable. Uh, as a wife, first, we have a lot of duties, a lot of things we need to do to put our house together. And as a business person, you have to make sure your business is intact, everything goes well, you get your profit. But here I am, found myself in all those uh, caps, but what... Uh, I had to plan myself. As a pastor's wife, there is a lot of demand from the church. Mm -hmm. People want you to be in charge of your house, your children, and them. You have to be responsible for them. Every time they have issues, they run to you. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I have some a business to run, but I decided I give everyone their time. Mm -hmm. I have a shallow that when I wake up in the morning, I have time with my children, the small ones who are, uh, the big ones are in boarding, but the small one, I make sure I'm the one who takes them to school. Mm -hmm. I have time with them, we sing, going to school, we have mm -hmm. time with them. And from, from there, I go back home, take care of my husband, because from morning glory, mm -hmm. I have to make sure he dresses well, he takes his breakfast, and we go off to work. Mm -hmm. When he goes to the office, I go to my office. Mm -hmm. I have a, an office, I have a, a business, a boutique, mm -hmm. and a bridal, a Tabasamu Bridals and Boutique, mm -hmm. where I report every morning. Mm -hmm. I take time there. When the day is off, mm -hmm. I have to go uh, from around four, mm -hmm. I go to the office at the church. Mm -hmm where in case there are anyone who wants to meet me, that is where we are going to meet yeah. and talk and share. Mm. And from there, I'm also a student. Mm. Five, I have classes mm. where I study mm. to make sure at least I am ahead. Because nowadays I encourage people to, if you have an opportunity, go back to school. Mm. So when I tell my, my women in church and the young ones, I have to be an example. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's it's a uh, Monday to Friday. It's a bit uh, tough. Mm -hmm. When we came, to, we come to Saturday and Sunday. It's relaxed because uh, I'm engaged most of the time. I make sure I'm available at church mm -hmm. for people to see me, for us to talk, and uh, also at the same time, I ensure that I have a day for my children. Mm -hmm. If it's Sunday after church. I am with them. We go for din lunch together, mm -hmm. maybe dinner together, and such like things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, from the way you have explained, I can sense that there is very good balance. Mm -hmm. Balance for your children, for your husband, for your work, yes. and for the ministry, and for yourself. Yes. Improving yourself mm -hmm. and, and going to, to, to class. I hear many pastors' wives say, oh, the work of the ministry is so... Demanding is so tax is is it is taxing, and you find sometimes they don't they don't do much on the side. They just say it's the work of the ministry, the work of the ministry. What would you advise 
a pastor's wife who feels like she cannot do anything else except just being a pastor's wife because people are there to be seen. Uh, they call you at um, an expected time and you have to go and attend to their needs. How can a pastor's wife plan their day like you have planned yours? What, what did it take you to balance like that? Uh, as I said, it was not an easy task to balance everything for you to meet all your goals and to make sure everything goes as you've planned. But I'll advise any pastor's wife not to sit and wait for things to happen by themselves. Nothing can happen. In everything we have to sacrifice, we have to have a plan. So every day I have a diary where I write everything, every single thing, even what I'm going to buy, mm -hmm. who I'm going to see, mm -hmm. so that I can know, am I fulfilling mm -hmm. or using my day mm -hmm. in a profitable way, mm -hmm. or there are some time I'm just idle, because mm -hmm. I will never want to be idle, seated, doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So I'll advise a pastor's wife to, everyone has a potential. Mm -hmm. They should look at themselves and say, what am I good at? What can I do? Mm. And when you are doing whatever you, 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 the purpose, the, the what you, you love doing, mm. know that behind you have a pastor to support. Mm -hmm. And you ask yourself, how am I going to support the church? Mm. Am, am I going to support my husband? Because mm. we are there to support them. Mm. We are not supposed to be missing any service. Mm. I've I've told myself, as long as my husband will be preaching, mm. I'll try as much as possible mm. to be in that service. Mm. Unless I am in class, mm. that is when I want to be in that service. Because mm. in that service, mm. we always tell ourselves, I'm your pastor. I tell my husband, I'm your pastor. Mm. So I'm the pastor to the pastor. Yeah. Mm. If I'm the pastor to my the, the pastor, what am I doing mm. to add value to him mm. as a man of God? Mm. What am I doing mm. to ensure that everything goes as mm. he has planned or purpose? Because mm. um, most of the time, before he does anything, he comes to me, we sit mm. down, he gives me ideas of whatever he wants to do in ministry, mm. and I come up with what I think it's good. Mm. But... For me to come up with what I think is good, mm. you have to be a very wise woman. Mm -hmm. wow. A pastor will not give an opportunity to a woman who is not wise. Mm. A woman who can just talk, mm. but there is no uh, any fruit mm. out of the talk. Mm -hmm. So out of that, I decided I'll have to add value to myself. Mm. And I'll, by the grace of God, mm. I want to have a uh, cash flow mm -hmm. economically mm -hmm. so that when I am available in uh, mission work and mm -hmm. everything, mm -hmm. I am comfortable. I don't mm -hmm. need to tell people mm -hmm. to support me, but mm -hmm. I can support the work of God. Amen. So as a pastor's wife, we have a lot to do. Mm -hmm. We have to balance our husband. We have to balance mm -hmm. the ministry, the family, mm -hmm. and our careers. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll urge everyone, you are a pastor, don't sit idle. Mm. Nowadays, we have a lot of jobs. Mm. If you cannot go to work, maybe you are not lucky enough to go to college or, mm. you, or you decided, no, I'm here mm. to support the dream of my husband. Mm. But we have online uh, businesses nowadays. Mm. At the back of your comfort of your seat, mm. you can just sit and do business. Mm. Do you know I sell utensils and I don't have utensil shop? Mm. <laughs> I just lot I, I I looked for a wholesaler. Mm. I he sends me the picture. Mm. I load to my WhatsApp and then people make their orders. Mm. Wow. From there, mm. from the wholesaler, it, it goes direct, direct to, to the to the, the people buyer. in Nairobi. I buy it in Nairobi and I sell to the people in Nairobi. That is and I wisdom. sell to the people in Okunda. Mm -hmm. So as a pastor's wife, we have a lot. Mm. We have to, to, to be ahead of our ladies. Mm. Yeah. When you stand, you'll have authority mm. because uh, this is what I'm doing and this is working for me and it mm. can work for you. Mm. So 
we are not idle as pastor's wife. We have a lot to do, mm. and uh, a lot is at our hands. Mm. So I'll, I encourage everyone to just look for what mm. is good, what is interesting, mm. what can I do as a pastor's wife. Wonderful. What I got from you is that you have to plan yourself. Yes. You are able to balance all these duties that you are doing and doing them effectively by planning. You know, some people just sit and whatever comes is what I will do. Whatever comes is what I will do. And then they think they are very busy, but they are just doing whatever they, whatever comes. And mm -hmm. a lot of things come. So a plan is what I get from what yes. you said. You plan your day and uh, one, one event after another. And at the end of the day, you have accomplished because you had a plan. Yes. If you don't plan, you plan to, to fail. fail. Yeah. So I, if you don't plan, people will plan for you. Yes. You'll find yourself attending every meeting for other people. Mm. They had no, you had no intention to go to any meeting. Mm. Someone calls you at any time because they are a pastor. If I have nothing to do, mm. you just follow them and go. So you'll be wasting a lot of your time building other visions and other people. Mm. And your own is there waiting for you. Mm. Yes. I want to ask this one question as I, I allow Judy because I can see she has a question already. <laughs> yes. I want to ask, among all these things that you do, which one do you enjoy the most? What I enjoy the most is uh, talking to women mm -hmm. and youths. Uh, uh, it's just a joy to see that I talk to a woman and their life is changed. Mm -hmm. Their marriage is changed. Mm -hmm. When I sit, I talk to the teenagers mm -hmm. and the young girls mm -hmm. and who are confused. They don't know where to begin. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, this is the way when you trust in God, when you go this way, mm -hmm. you will succeed. And they follow and they succeed. That is my joy. Amen. Yes. So your joy is ministry. Yes. <laughs> that comes out <laughs> very clearly. Very clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your joy is ministry. Wow, that's okay. powerful. Mm. I have liked the point that you said you upgrade yourself. Mm. I understand in church we are leading different types and levels of women in church, different people. They are lawyers, very educated people, good cooks, mm. eh? very highly placed people. So it is very important for a pastor's wife to upgrade themselves, mm -hmm. at least to be somewhere. Yeah. Eh? You don't know how to set even a table. It's good to go at the land. Mm. It's very important. Mm. Because these people are looking up to you mm. as their example. Yeah. Wow, that's very wonderful. Mm. Now, my question is if where you are today in the ministry, is it where you began? No. Mm. We began uh, far. Mm. Where I am now is just the grace of God. Mm. Uh, where we, we started, mm. okay, it's a, it's a long story, but I'll cut it. Yes. We started uh, before Pastor was, uh, we, we went to, before we went to Ukunda, mm. Pastor was working mm. and not within the country. Okay. He was working outside the country. Mm. So he, was, he used to say that when I start, the day I'll start ministry, mm. I will buy everything for myself. Mm. I don't want to keep on begging people to, mm. to, to bring money so that you can buy. Mm. So he planned himself mm. as a human being. Mm. But the, the moment he was called, that was the time the money had finished. There, were no, there was no the money. The moment he was called yes. by God now. Yes, that oh. was the time mm. we had spent everything. Mm. When he was outside, what I used to do, uh, like any other Kenya, mm. plot somewhere you mm. buy. Mm. When you get money, that is what I used to do. Yes. So he, he, he work, I invest in Kenya. Mm. And when he came, we had enough money for mm. us to, to, to do some few things and I do my business. Mm. But unfortunate, that is the time business was not moving. Nothing was happening. Mm. He was in school of ministry. Mm. And uh, I was... Uh, that time I was doing my first degree. Mm. And uh, the day he went to open in Ukunda, mm. we had no cash, okay. liquid money. Mm. And uh, we were told to go. I remember he asked, is there any amount somewhere mm. where we can start with? He was mm. told there is no money. Mm. It is just faith. Mm. And because he's a man of faith, mm. he told me, 
what is in my mind, what mm. the vision I have, that mm. is what will be there. Mm. So uh, we went there the way we were, mm. with the small seven we, we had, mm. but by the grace of God, mm. everything just kept going the way he had planned. Mm. So now, we thank God we have a church, mm. Mm. at least uh, we are three years, okay. with around 250 to 300. Wow. We have a plot yeah. which Ukunda has bought, mm. the church plot, mm. where next, ma next year we'll start our, mm. our, our building. Mm. Uh, actually, it's not the same mm. way. It mm. is different. Mm. And uh, some days ago, I was looking back mm. how we were mm. when he was working outside. Mm. Yes. And now, okay. within a short time, mm. by the grace of God, mm. whatever we, we are doing, the business we are doing and the, the flow of money, mm. it's greater than when mm. it was That's outside. Right. Yes. This is when I knew this was God. Mm. This is just the plan of God. It was just not just a mm. mere thinking, I want to be a pastor because mm. no. Mm. It was just the appointed mm. time of God. God. Mm. Was he called when he was working outside the country or the call he received when he was here? A uh, pastor has been an assistant pastor. Okay. The ones we call Watuamkono. Yes. Tell us another, about that. Where? <laughs> in, a, in another ministry called okay. Word of Faith. Okay. That is where he's been serving. Mm. But he goes to work. Mm. When he comes back to the country, mm. he serves. Okay. But because I was there, mm. I was a, the, the pastor's uh, pastor to the women. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he was not there most of the time. I was mm -hmm. the one who was, who was doing everything that he mm -hmm. is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So at work, he used to preach. I would say the country he used to preach. Mm -hmm. When he comes back, he preach mm -hmm. in, uh, in the church. And he used to be called different places. Mm -hmm. And uh, the time he decided I have to take a break, mm -hmm. he wanted to learn two topics, prayer and faith. He mm. went to SOM to learn those two, and then he goes back to, mm. to work. But that is where he was captured. Okay. <laughs> while From in there, the school of ministry. While in the school of ministry. Okay. From there, he did not go back to work. Wow. Here he is, he's a mm. pastor in Ukonda. Mm. Most, many times, mm. the company, mm. they've been calling him back, mm. but mm. it is gone. Mm. Have you ever thought to be a pastor's wife? when you were growing up? I was married to a profession. Mm -hmm. I had never thought. I knew he had a seed of God. Mm. I knew he was a man who loves ministry, mm. loves preaching, he mm. used to preach a lot. Mm. But at any one mm. point, I would never thought mm. will be a, let's, let me put it a full-time yeah. minister. It will be have a church where he will be the senior pastor. Mm. I never thought of that. Mm. Yes. Okay. You see, one thing mm. I have discovered is that many pastors' wives <laughs> had never yeah, sure. thought of being pastors' wives. But yeah. interesting enough, they are yeah. enjoying the yeah. walk. Yeah. 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 Things that they never thought about, yeah. things that they, lines that they thought they would follow, mm. some have given them up mm. and started loving mm. what, what they do as ministers of the gospel that's mm. to me mm. that is uh, that can only take god yeah. for you to go in a line that you never thought about mm. yet if you ask what do you enjoy doing you enjoy doing ministry yeah. so god can turn things, turn things around mm. and uh, the greatest thing is that he will turn them around and cause you to enjoy doing them. Sure. You do them in joy. Mm. You don't feel like I was deprived. Mm. I, I am not doing what I, I wanted to do. Mm. Now, uh, if pastor's wives are not immune mm. to the problems that other people mm. face, they face family problems, they face trials, they are not immune to temptations, now, when a pastor's wife finds herself in a challenging situation, who does she go to? Where does she seek help from? 
that has been a very big challenge mm -hmm. to myself and most of the pastor's wife when we talk. Mm -hmm. uh, the, okay, I started to say that people come to you with their issues, yeah. but you have nowhere to take your issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we are on earth, yes, we are going to pray about it. We'll pray and we'll pray mm -hmm. and the Spirit of God will lead us. But we need a shoulder to lean on. Mm -hmm. We need a, a person whom we can sit down and talk. And uh, what I can say is that we have fellowship in our own ministries mm -hmm. and we have women whom we trust. Mm -hmm. And that is where a problem comes with trust. Mm -hmm. Most of the time we go to a pastor, a pastor's wife, someone you look uh, up to, you know that this person, when I pour myself to, mm. all will be well. Mm -hmm. But after two days or three, it is not well. Mm. Your issues are all round. Mm. People are discussing you. Mm. So it is a challenge to pastors because you cannot go to Mshirika mm. to pour your, your problems there. You can't. Because mm. that will be one uh, a fall. It will be the beginning of your fall. Mm. And uh, I, I think a pastor wife should identify someone who is mature, mm. someone who they can run to any time, they can call and pour their hearts to. Mm. There are some issues I will go to the pastor and talk to. Mm. We talk, he advises me, he tells me what to do. Mm. And there are some issues I need a woman, mm. a fellow woman where we can sit and talk. And I know that maybe you had gone through the same thing. Mm. So you are the best person to advise me. Or you've handled such mm. with another person. Mm. So a pastor's wife should not be a lone ranger. Mm. They should not just sit down mm. and see that I am alone. There is no one else. No. Just look for people, your fellow minister, mm. who can handle such issues. Mm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's very important mm -hmm. because many pastors' wives, when they go through problems, they decide to keep them to, to yes. themselves mm -hmm. because they don't know who to trust. They can't mm -hmm. share with the church members, but it's important to identify a mature person. A mature person. Yeah. Oh, to add that, because mm -hmm. uh, maybe the problem comes with the pastor mm -hmm. himself. You've had a challenge with him. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are not understanding there is something... You don't, he doesn't understand about you. Mm. You cannot go to the same pastor. Mm. So that is when we need to, to go to someone who is uh, a, ahead of us mm. and speak to them. Mm. I remember there is a story of uh, some years back, a musician who had a lot of challenge. She had a lot of issues, but she kept it within herself mm -hmm. until the day she died mm -hmm. that is where everyone was oh she was a pastor mm -hmm. what is happening people are not speaking out so it is good every pastor do not uh, be silent mm -hmm. speak out your mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. yeah, that is why we are human and we are there for one another amen thank you very much that is what needs to happen mm -hmm. because everybody goes through it doesn't matter you are position, your rank, mm. everybody goes through some challenges. Mm. And when people go through challenges, they need to know that it, those challenges are not uncommon to men. Mm. Just like what the Bible says. Mm. What you are going through is not uncommon to men. Somebody else went through it yes. and you can be able to overcome it. You have said you have been in Ukunda now for three years mm. by the grace of God. What are some of the experiences you have experienced as a pastor's wife when we are growing this church to where it is today? Okay, Ukunda is a, a funny place because mm. you know it's a place of tourism. Mm. So you, you, you just conclude how ladies are dressed in that place. Okay. Even when we started the church, we used to have ladies who come with micro mini in church. Well. They've come to church, they've come mm. to worship, you cannot yes. chase them away. Very true. Mm. But uh, we used to, to talk to the ushers, mm. you put them in a strategic place <laughs> where they, they are not going to confuse the entire <laughs> con 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 congregation. <laughs> so there, there is a place for them. 
-hmm. and they walk comfortable. Mm -hmm. They have no issues. Th yeah. That is one of the issues we have in Ukunda mm -hmm. to date. Mm -hmm. Ladies walking half naked and they don't care. They are very comfortable. They are very comfortable. I remember when the first time we saw, I was with my two big girls, mm. we saw a lady walking half naked. Mm. I called them and told them, do you see her? Mm. The way she is, mm. that is not the right way yes. of dressing. Yes. As a Christian, yeah. as a Mm. just a lady that is not the right way and mm. i give them reasons why yes. we sit down mm. it it was a it was a very difficult uh, mm. culture mm. that we met in ukunda mm. so every time tuko na kikao na watoto mm. have you seen that that mm. is not the right way yes. and you see young girls mm. who are teenager mm. they are working with uh, old men mm. who are 70 80 oh, yeah. and that is the way of life, way of life so ukunda it's a, a place mm. where surely it needs god mm. it needs a, it has a different culture mm. and uh, it is a, a tough one mm. and it is a place where uh, with something else we saw that is strange mm. kuna waonaji Mm. Mm. Churches have waunaji. Mm. Those diviners. Yes. Diviners. Where people are, yeah. uh, they go for prayers. Yes. You are told whatever things you are told. Yeah. At the end of the day, they are not the right thing. Yeah. And you see people going to Dar es Salaam. What? Kuonewa. Tunaenda kuonewa, I don't know kuonewa. So that is... The seer. Yes. They are seer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a time people mm. used to come to our church and they ask the, the people they come with, Pastor, when you are now on, mm. so that I can know, is mm. this the right place to mm. be? Mm. So, Pastor, there was a time Pastor told them, I don't need to sit, to, I don't need to sit for anyone. Yes. Whatever I am preaching, yeah. that is your prophetic word. Yes. Mm. You don't need these mm. people who are going to, to mm. do acrobatics to mm. tell you yes. what God is talking about you. Yeah. And uh, the, the nyota, mm. the, the, we have pastors of nyota nyota. Mm. And then we have a, a church, specific church, mm -hmm. where ladies, you go, they pray for you to get a mzungu. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is how serious Ukunda is. Serious. So it is a place where mm -hmm. we need God. Mm -hmm. So now these girls, they have entered in church. You are the mama of that church. You are the wife of the pastor. And they are dressed the way they are dressed. Yes. All kinds of characters mm -hmm. are coming. What do you do? To help them you call them to speak to them or what do you do to help these girls uh we talk to them okay yeah I'll, i have to talk to them mm. i have to personally tell. or you have some people speak it to them personally okay uh, i call the ladies mm. we sit down mm. we chat mm. with we we talk on how is the right way to live or mm. to walk in the Lord. Mm. That is where I take that advantage of talking to them about okay. the dressing. Okay. But when you are in ministry, yes. I call you as yes. an individual. Yeah. I talk to you, I tell you about the mm. dressing because mm. you we've had mm. some cases where a sister comes with a, a, a short skirt mm. above the knee, mm. a little above the knee. Mm. So they serve. So mm. such cases, I talk to them. Okay. Yes. So you have a work, a pastor's wife there. They have work to work in they, church, yes, not just to work. sit and uh, wait to hear what the you, man of you, God you is. You can't saying. sit. You can't sit and mm. just wait to mm. hear for the pastor, and then you go home. That mm. is it. No, mm. there is a lot people. of work. Yes. Wow, wow that's wonderful. powerful. Wonderful. That's that's really uh, a difficult place to serve. But you yes. know what, Eve. Mm. There is grace Amen. everywhere where the Lord takes you mm. and there are those challenges. The Lord gives you the grace mm. to be able to minister to those people. And I believe many are having their lives changed. Mm. Amen. They're having their life changed. And they, you know, the Bible says in the last days, uh, men will have itching ears mm. seeking to uh, looking for men that will tell them the mm. things that they are itching ears mm. sure. are itching to be told. But mm. Continue preaching the gospel. You don't have to see anything. Mm. You don't have to, uh, to, 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 to 
go according to what they, they are demanding. Mm. You preach the gospel and the gospel has got power mm. to set people free. Mm. And that's what the ministers of the gospel in areas like that mm. should know. Yeah. That the, the word of God that mm. comes out of their mouth, mm. like your husband says, mm. it is your prophetic word. Yes. Then you just preach that, stick mm. to that mm. and and you will see people getting delivered like you have continued to see mm -hmm. even in the past. Mm -hmm. So we thank God very much for what is happening. We are taking a break, a very short break. We will be back. Don't go away. Mm -hmm. uh, you are watching Kingdom Queen. And uh, we want you to, uh, if you have get, got any questions, please ask them. If you have got any uh, need that you need to call, the numbers are on your screen. Call. There will be somebody waiting to talk to you. We are coming back. Don't go away. Thank you. Welcome back to Kingdom Queen. We are happy that you are watching and we want to assure you that by the end of this program, your life will be changed. We trust God that you will begin to find joy in serving the Lord and also begin to find ways of sharing your problems and finding someone that you can confide in because ministers um, can be very lonely. And as I said before, they are not immune to challenges. They are not immune to trials and temptations. So it's very important to find a place where you can go and, and share your problem and, and be able to get help. Don't die in your loneliness. You can be helped. People are out there. They are still uh, trustworthy people. So do not suffer from lack of trust because of a, a past experience that you had. We want to encourage you and to um, advise you. If you have a, an issue that is lingering, it doesn't seem to be going, seek for help and you will be helped. Uh, welcome back, Eve. Thank you. We are very, very glad that you are with us here and we are getting a lot of um, information from our interaction with you. Uh, you talked about um, the place where you minister. It's a tourist town and because of the nature of the town, then it has got unique problems that may not be in other uh, places. Uh, the, the case of uh, girls coming to church in very short dresses because that's how they live out there and when they come to church they come like that and i've liked what you said you don't make them feel uncomfortable but there's a place you know when ushers are receiving them they don't know why they are being put in that corner but it's a corner where they are not distracting everybody in the church it's a plant thing it's known by the leaders, it's known by the ushers, and they sit there, they listen to the word of God, and they, 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 they get blessed. I wanted to find out, uh, when these girls come to you, because you said you get time to talk to them, how do you correct their dressing without them feeling condemned, without them feeling like um, they are out of place? What strategy do you use? to assimilate them in the church so that they come to a place that now they can begin to dress modestly without feeling like they are being condemned. Because I've seen in some churches, they, well, well, as soon as they enter the, 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 the door, they, they tie lessons on them. Mm -hmm. And you know, you tie a lesson <laughs> to a young girl, she'll never come back to that church. Mm -hmm. How do you go about it? I think that's something that we need to hear. Yeah. yeah. Um, first, it's not easy. Because, uh, like, the way Kenyans say, you have freedom mm. of uh, dressing, mm. 
people are, are allowed to dress the way they want. Mm -hmm. But when we come to church, it is sensitive. Sure. And uh, you find that uh, someone has come with a very short, first one thing I told the ushers, do not condemn anyone. Mm -hmm. Do not make them feel as they are evil people, they are not part of this congregation, no. Mm -hmm. Even if someone comes twice, mm -hmm. With just let them be. Mm -hmm. And when they come, that mm -hmm. is when we note that this one has come. Mm -hmm. So we make sure they don't go in front, mm -hmm. at the front uh, seats, mm -hmm. but they, they are put somewhere that they cannot uh, distract maybe the people who are on the pulpit mm -hmm. and uh, maybe other fellow uh, people who are brothers who have come to church. Mm -hmm. So they are, they are, it is two way. First we have uh, the ministers and then we have the congregation. Mm -hmm. And with the congregation still, we have those who are just coming, maybe they are on holiday, they've come. Mm -hmm. And we have those we know they come regularly. So with the people who come regularly, it is easy for us because uh, we, we have meetings for ladies we have groups for, for ladies in church. Mm -hmm. Like our church, we've uh, grouped ladies in different 15. Every group has 15. Mm -hmm. That is where we'll be talking heart to heart. We sit down, mm -hmm. we talk, we educate ourselves mm -hmm. the way we are supposed to, to come to church, mm -hmm. the way we are supposed to dress and mm -hmm. everything in a friendly way. Mm -hmm. That is now our next plan mm -hmm. of which the groups have, will be starting Actually, they've started this month. Mm -hmm. And previously, it was difficult because you find that uh, someone has come, they are new, no one knows them, leave them alone. Mm -hmm. When someone comes the second, the third time, we mm -hmm. sit in groups, we mm -hmm. sit in, we have our monthly meetings, we have quarterly meetings. Mm -hmm. That is where we, we, we talk about it. So we sit down as as sisters mm -hmm. and we talk. Mm -hmm. How are we going to improve ourselves? How are we going to improve our ladies? We don't point a finger to someone and tell them, mm -hmm. your dressing is not good. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we can correct these things mm -hmm. in a very friendly way. Mm -hmm. And t t with the ministers, I call them, we mm -hmm. sit down, mm -hmm. we share, we talk. When you say ministers, you mean those the who are serving who in, serve, like, in ushering, in choir, in, choir. in present worship, mm -hmm. in, uh, in ushering. Mm -hmm. okay. So with them or any leader. Mm -hmm. So a leader should be an example. Mm -hmm. When you come with a, a, either a very short mm -hmm. dress mm -hmm. or a, an exposed top, mm -hmm. that is an example you are giving every young mm -hmm. person in that church. Mm -hmm. So with them, we sit down and we talk. There are some people who have gone through a background which to them it is nothing. Mm -hmm. And where they used to be, there are some who have just gotten saved mm -hmm. and they, after some three, four months, they come. But it's difficult for them to let go. Mm -hmm. Another example, we had a door-to-door uh, -door and a, a lady, some group of lady, they got saved mm -hmm. and they are alcoholic seriously mm. alcoholic. Mm. So you find someone who has uh, that past, some of them, they don't just leave it at, at that moment. Mm -hmm. You have to go through with them, praying with them, talking to them, encouraging them. There are some, you have to take them to the rehab. Mm -hmm. So there is this particular lady who came, she was so energetic, she, want, she wants to come to church, she wants to, to serve. But I... I, 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 there is something I note and I told them because uh, someone came and told me, Mommy, I met that lady drunk again. But I told them, don't condemn anyone. Mm -hmm. If they are drunk, mm -hmm. meet them, greet them, mm -hmm. encourage them, mm -hmm. tell them this situation you are mm -hmm. at, yeah. you can overcome this. We'll do it together. Mm -hmm. Let's just go and maybe pray. Let's go and do something. By the moment you just condemn them from there. Mm -hmm. That is done. Mm -hmm. You've just You've lost, lost them again. Them. Yeah. So there is a systematic way mm -hmm. of how you can talk to the people who have addiction in some things, maybe, and the wrong dressing, without them feeling mm -hmm. they are out of place. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. clear. Yeah. What I'm getting from you is 
the point of the culture of your area where you are operating. Mm. This means, ma'am, as pastors' wives, as we do ministry, it is good for us to understand the culture of that area. Mm. Because in our churches, we will receive different types of people. Yeah. It happened some time back, like three, four years ago, I went to a church somewhere on a Sunday. And while we are praising, drunkards ended in the church mm -hmm. with, their, with their drink. And they came, they joined the congregation, they were dancing. And you find these people, they have lacked somebody to show them the right way. Mm. And uh, I felt this is a harvest that needs to be rich. Mm -hmm. And now they have waited for somebody to reach for them. They brought themselves in church. Mm -hmm. So I believe from your point, you learned your culture in Okunda mm -hmm. and you, you have tried as the pastor's wife there mm -hmm. to help the people who are receiving these guests, to receive them and not to condemn them. Mm -hmm. That means mm -hmm. us as pastor's wives, Instead of sitting there in idol in church, it is good to discover what happens in that area mm. and portray our love to the people who come to the church. Mm. We embrace them. Yeah. Because this, you never know who this person will become tomorrow. Mm. Mm. It's very important for us as ministers to understand the area where we are operating because this, the, the Lord sends somebody sends us there with a reason. Mm. And I believe through that we transform that area. And you know, mm. one of the one of the roles, among mm. is the roles that mm. a pastor's wife plays mm. is to love. Sure. Yes. Mm. A pastor's wife must have love. And mm. there is no great, greater love mm. than loving people that come and they mm. look like Imagine. unlovable. Mm. And when the pastor's wife in that congregation mm. can stretch a hand of sure. love and show these people love. Mm. It makes the whole difference. difference. Mm. difference. So it's, instead of sitting there, like mm. you are saying, look yeah. around. Look around. Who yeah. is coming to church? Mm. Maybe this person is beaten outside there. They yeah. just need somebody to they tell them, them they love them. Yeah. Mm. Imagine. And because of that simple thing you do to this person, mm. just greeting that person, if you different and mm. it will be totally transformed yeah. by the way you receive them. Mm. Yeah. Getting back to you, if you said before we went to break that there is a time your husband before becoming a full time, he was working outside the nation mm. and you were left here with your four children. Mm. How did you manage your relationship, the two of you, bearing in mind that your husband is away, you are here, mm. and there is a church where you are, mm. there you are the mama, yeah. the, 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 the pastor in charge of women. the women. Yeah. Mm. How did you go about that? Uh, when pastor was outside the country, mm. first thing I, I know mm. is uh, I wanted to do is to make sure our relationship mm. is still intact. Mm. Mm. Because uh, when people are apart mm. for long, mm. If you are not care careful, your relationship can yeah. just go like that. Sure. So one of the things I used to do is communication. Okay. We used to communicate frequently, mm. almost uh, uh, a long time. Mm. Any time it was free mm. from the office, mm. used to call. Mm. We talk. Mm. Sometimes he, he, he was uh, off, even mm. at night. Mm. The following day, he's not going to, to work. Mm. We used to talk the whole night. Mm -hmm. wow. We are just sharing, we are mm. laughing, we are mm. talking. Because at the end of the day, mm. uh, up, up, uh, the man of God is mm. first a man. Sure. Mm. Because before he becomes of man. God. Mm. Of God. Mm. So when we sit down, <laughs> we have to make sure mm. that... Eve mm. is out. Mm. That Joseph is out. Sure. Mm. And I'm the one who is going to make sure that Joseph is out. Yes. And when he's far, he will know that I have some someone. Mm. I have someone who I can talk to, who mm. I can laugh. Because mm. outside there, mm. it was just serious work. Mm. From work to work. Mm. Sometimes uh, there are no time for anything. Mm. Two days there is silence, you don't mm. know where he is. Mm. After two days, he resurfaced, so there was an attack. So we were, we mm. went hiding. Mm. 
So it was very difficult. But one thing I learned is communication. Mm. communication. And uh, that after communicating with me, they mm. talk to the children. Mm. They make sure they see this is your dad, that it is a video call. Mm. You see this is your dad, he's okay. Mm. He's ensuring that you have a greater uh, mm. life. Yeah. Yes. And uh, another thing, when he used to come for holiday, mm. we make sure we go for holiday as mm. a family. First, mm. the two of us. Mm. Second, with the children mm. for us to bond. Mm. Uh, and uh, the, the challenges I used to get even now at church mm. as a, a pastor of the women. Yes. I used to share with him. Mm. He advised me. Mm. He tells me this is the way to go. This is how we are going to handle this thing. Mm. So he was involved. Wow. Even in the ministry, mm. although he is Away. at a distance, mm. yeah. So it is. It was not easy. Okay. Yeah. It it's not an easy thing to be apart. Okay. When you see that pastor has gone for mm. for long, you are mm. left there. Mm. You you have to make sure you are the father, mm. you are the mother, yes. you are everything. Mm. That responsibility of yeah. a father, you have to make sure you, you do it. You mm. cover it as a mm. as a wife. Have yes. you ever regretted? being a pastor's wife? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thank you. When we started, <laughs> somehow, <laughs> when we started somehow, I was yeah. like, hey, is this really, I called, why you called? Actually, there was a time I called, I asked him, why you really called? <laughs> what <laughs> made you ask you that? A lot of issues, a <laughs> lot of things, the oppression. Mm. So this is someone who was outside the country, mm. He came, he went to school of ministry mm. and he became a, a pastor mm. in charge of a church. Mm. <laughs> so there are some things mm. to handle. Mm. was a bit challenge. Mm. It was a challenge. And then uh, with us, mm. we used to normally, we don't hide one another anything. Yeah. We talk. Mm. And there is a saying that pastors should not tell their wives mm. some things. Mm. So that is where <laughs> the problem is. Because <laughs> some sometimes they used to hear something from the mm. pulpit. Mm. I, mm. Na mm. na ye ya na you you know, know. I, yeah, I didn't know about it. But with time, I came to differentiate between ministry yes. and our friendship. Mm. Mm. Yeah. These are different things. When he's a minister, he mm. handles things in church. Yes. He makes decisions in church. Mm. That is a pastor. Mm. Now, when we come this other side, mm. he's a friend. Yes. There are some things he might not tell me about mm. the church. Mm. There are things he doesn't tell me about uh, some issues, maybe mm. individual issue of people. Mm. And sometimes he's so busy, he'll not remember. Mm. He just remember that he's on the pulpit. Now there is something he's about to announce. Mm. Maybe it involved. I, I need to be involved. Mm. And I just, <laughs> just. And that's why sometimes they say, I've not even told my wife yes, this one. Yeah, that is a cover up. <laughs> they are clearing the air. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and that is it. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that is drasty. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> now you 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 are a young mm. pastor's wife. No, yeah, I mean young in the sense that you are, say, three years? Yes. Um, what motivates you mm. at this beginning point of mm. ministry? What motivates you to continue? Mm. What makes you uh, wake up every morning and say, we are continuing with this thing? Although you are like, like in the beginning, mm. but you are motivated to continue. What is your motivation? Uh, when I see from where we began mm -hmm. and today, mm -hmm. first, that is a very big motivation. Because where we began and today, it's two different worlds. Amen. And then, uh, personally, my life, no, actually, we've sacrificed our, our life. Before, I, I told you, before Pastor came mm -hmm. to, to be a full-time, he was working outside. And when he was going to open a church in Ukunda, he had a ticket back to work. Mm. So it's like he left his work. Yeah. He left all the monies to go and work for mm. God. Mm. And one thing that motivates me is I've seen God working our, for our own things mm. financially. Mm -hmm. I have seen God opening doors which we never thought Amen. he will open. Mm. And one thing I know 
is because of the sacrifice. Mm. He was not idle to go to be a, a pastor. Mm. He left something very yes. precious yes. to do the work of God. Amen. And out of that, I've seen God giving us things which we had never thought about. Mm. And uh, I, I remember the first time when we were about to launch the church, I was telling him, we have to buy another car. We have to buy another car. Sitaki watu waone kuwa tumenunua na pesa za kanisa. No. You want to buy it early. Yes, you want to buy it early before you establish yourself in ministry. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. Mm. After around two years, last year, we bought another car. Mm -hmm. mm. And it is just God. The way the whole thing happened, mm. yeah. It is just God who Amen. brought it. Mm. So that is a motivation when we see ourselves going forward, we are moving forward, things are changing, things are happening, mm. which we never thought financially in a, a, a family, as a family, mm. and the support we have. Mm. That support is another thing. Mm. JCC, Okunda, we have people who are really standing behind us. Amen. People are there mm. to see that things are moving, Mm. Financially, things are moving mm. in, the, uh, in their departments. We have leaders who have sacrificed themselves mm. to work mm. under, the, the, under Pastor Joseph. That is a motivation. Mm. You come every Sunday, you find things are there. Mm. The church is clean. Mm. At first, when we started, Pastor made sure he goes mm. ahead to make sure everything is okay. Mm. But now, he will come. And find, and find everything. He just comes, he goes to his office. From mm. the office, he comes to, to the main service. Mm. Everything is okay. Amen. That is a great motivation. motivation. Yes. There's something I have picked, Judy, before you we continue. Yes. I want to bring it out. Mm. When uh, Pastor Masai, mm. Eve's husband, mm. wanted to begin ministry, he wanted to buy everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and make sure that he begins Without on, stress. On, without yeah, with no stress and mm. not not collecting money, yes. not raising, fundraising yes. mm. to buy things. You want to be fully prepared. Yeah. yeah. And you know what she said? It didn't work out like that. Mm. I wanted to bring this out. Mm. The work of the ministry mm. is a work of faith. Yes. Jeez. And you wanted to buy a car before. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that people don't say you bought it with, the, with their money. Uh, yes. But it didn't happen. It didn't. But the work of faith mm. brought the car. Mm. while you are still in ministry yes. so that people can see God calls yes. and God equips. Mm. You don't have to equip yourself first mm. so that you go. So many people are hindered from getting into ministry because they want to be prepared yes. first. Mm. It doesn't work. Mm. So many, many, time, many are times when somebody is going to ministry, actually they lose everything that they had. Mm. They may have heard a lot of things, but mm. God does not want you to brag yes. that mm. I am the one mm. who did this. Mm. So I think for ministers of the gospel and for those who are trying to prepare themselves, yes. you take a step of faith. Mm. Yes. Because for every vision, mm. there is provision. Mm. Sure. There is provision. So yeah. I picked that and it is very mm. powerful that mm. it didn't work, mm. but look what the Lord has done. Mm. Now you can look back and say, where we are yes. is not where we started yes. because God has mm. been in it mm. and God is our provider. Mm. God is the supplier mm. of whatever we need mm. to fulfill the vision that he has given us. He cannot mm. give you a vision mm. and not be able to provide, to provide for the vision. Mm. And I think also adding to that, mm. as also pastor's wives, we should not pressurize our husbands. Mm -hmm. Because we want this, we want to live in a house like this, we mm. want big cars, you see. We want to live large. These men, they have been called. Mm. And the, the one who has called them is a provider. Yeah. Yeah. He has given them a vision, mm. he will provide for the vision. Mm. And the vision, he provides everything. Mm. Because God knows we need all this. All these things. The Bible says it is very clear. Yes, He knows yeah. we need all this. Mm. What is required of us, I think, is only we believe first in the <laughs> in our man of God, mm. in the vision that God has given it to him. Yeah. Then from there we begin now to walk with the journey of faith together. together. And we grow from there. Mm. Amen. Amen. If Amen. if I may ask, 
where you are now. Mm. Are there some things you have known today which you didn't know mm. when you were beginning? You wished you could have known before. Yeah, there's, I've learned a lot mm. uh, for the past three, three years. Mm. I wish I knew mm. you cannot please everyone. Sure. As a mother of the child. I like that. I think I like that. That's a nice one. Yeah. <laughs> you, whatever you do, mm. you have to do mm -hmm. things mm. to satisfy yourself. Yes. And to do things to please God. Mm. But with people, mm. they come and go. Mm. Those are, when we started, we used to have these women. Mm. They've, they've had that JCC. They are good. When you go with your problem, they will solve it. And indeed, when they come with my my heart, and a mother comes with a child, with a child I've not eaten, I just give. I just feel like, no, you are not supposed to sleep without eating. You are not supposed to suffer. So I used to just give whatever I have. Mm. I call my chair lady, she's the one who has suffered the most. <laughs> Come, <laughs> give first and then I give. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. But what? there was a time a lady came and uh, <laughs> borrowed a loan. Yeah. Mommy, I need a loan mm. of this amount. Mm. I'll return after three, mm. three weeks. Mm. When I gave, mm. that was the end of her. I've never seen her in church again. Mm. Up to today. Up to today. Mm. Now I knew... Mm. There is, there shouldn't be any relationship with, within mm. a pastor's wife, mm. money with that, yeah. a member. A member. We should not have that. Yeah. But, uh, but what I know is uh, there is a lot I have learned mm. about even especially women. Mm. Women are sensitive. Sure. Women are people who, when you talk to them, mm. you have to be precise. Mm. You have to know what you are telling them. Mm. And uh, when you talk to someone, you've sat down the two of you, mm. you are talking issues. Mm. You have to know what I, am I telling this person mm. without mentioning other people. Yes. That is another thing I, I learned. Yes. Someone come for advice, mm. they tell you a general thing. Mm. Kumbe, at the back of the mm. story, there is something fishy which is going on, which yeah, I don't know. Don't After know. that, they go with those words. Mm. Telling people, ata mama alikatai. Mm. Ata mama alisema, huyu afai kuingia leadership anasumbua. Mm. You know, mm. and that person had come for advice and I give, gave a general advice. Mm. But now back in their mind, they have a name. Mm. So they go telling, hii mama alitaki, hii mama ataki. So I was wondering, why are sometimes things weird I came to realize, ah, tunambua, you don't like this, you don't like this, you are busy. You know, some, there, there is a leader who came and told us, nowadays you are very busy, I cannot see you. How? And I'm just in the office. Yeah, we are told you are, you are very busy. So there are people who are telling on behalf of. So there are some things I learn. So when I, I, I stand in front of them, I tell them, if you have issue, you want to see us, just call. Yes. And there are some, it's some things like uh, mm. the giving. Mm. You cannot please everyone. You cannot just give. Yes. We've now, you have a ministry, mm. the Docas ministry, yeah. mm. which deals with such departments. Mm. Mm. Uh, because of that, now at least we are sorted. There are a lot of things yes. I'm learning. Mm. Yes. I've liked what you have said. A pastor's wife should not involve themselves with the members financially. Yes. This is what I believe. Mm. If somebody comes to borrow you some money, somebody comes to borrow, don't lend. Mm. Give. Just, Just give. give. Whatever you can. They, maybe they came and asked for 50,000 mm. and you have got 5,000. Mm. Tell them, I don't have 50,000, mm. but I can give you 5,000. 5, mm. Don't return. Mm. God will feel. Don't begin lending people money yes. because people have a tendency of not paying back. Mm. And if they don't pay back, you get grieved. Yes. Mm. And it, it, is, it is spoils the relationship. Mm. And even uh, if pastors why should also not borrow, not mm. being borrowed, yes. but they should also, also not, not borrow. Yes. Mm. Because the minute you borrow, mm. 
mm. and then you are not able to return at the time you decide you return mm. your integrity is mm. at stake sure. mm. so when it comes to financial matters if i think you have it right mm. don't mm. Um, don't associate or relate with the finances help where you can yeah. but don't lend yeah. sure. don't lend mm. and when you lend and they can't pay they will also leave the church mm. yeah because they will be guilty i don't want to go see pastors why because i have not returned our money mm. and 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 they go mm. so that is the the right way to handle with a money a money matters with mm. with members maybe what I can, I can advise a pastor's wife somewhere uh you you have an idea and you don't know where to start with mm. you have no finances Mm. you can save as little as you wish mm. we have sako around mm. and we have women charmers mm. the ones the, it's not associated with church mm. but it's just at the market because mm. in church you are pastor's wife mm. when you go to the market people want you to sell them a, a, a dress not as a pastor's wife yes. as a business as person a business yes so you go to banks mm. you save you take your loan and you do your business mm. with that you'll not be in a situation that you are borrowing people especially the members mm. finances or something like that so they should have actually we should also have knowledge about businesses mm. how to expand your business how to start a small business even when 1000 you'll start a business and it will grow Mm. And as they do business I think it's important for them to know if somebody comes let's say you sell dresses or you sell utensils or whatever you sell mm. and somebody comes and says give me this I will pay no tell them leave it here until you get the money yes, yes. <laughs> yeah when yeah. you get the money you come and take sure. mm. because they are pastors wives who are doing business and mm. the business is not bringing yes. any interest mm. because people are taking mm. you come and take a uh, kitenge mm. i sell kitenge i sell bed sheets mm. you take them on credit mm. and you don't pay mm. so my policy is and what i would tell people is yeah. you've liked this bed sheet yes i'll keep it for you yes up to a certain time mm. go bring the money mm. give me the money take the bed sheet but yes. you don't take the bed sheet and go away and go and bring me the money mm. no that is not business <laughs> not <laughs> that is not business <laughs> thank you very much eve wow. it has been a wonderful time we are coming to the close of this program time just flies mm. i i don't uh, believe how quickly we we begin and then you find it is time to close mm. so thank you very much for finding time to come and be our guest today we have enjoyed interacting with you and uh, a lot of resourceful things that you have said i believe they will uh, go a long way in helping a pastor's wife somewhere and making the the people that we are ministering to grow and also at the same time feel comfortable mm. in our hands mm. praise the lord so i want to give you one minute uh, or there about to give you a closing remark if i uh, want to talk to a pastor wife who is uh, at home and uh, maybe she does not know what to do and where to begin first i'll tell you it's your church you are not entitled to that church mm. that church is a house of god mm. where everyone comes and worship because mm. sometimes when you feel entitled when people not give you or address you in a certain way mm. you'll feel so bad they are not respecting you the way you should they should uh, do it to you but when you are there you are there to serve you are there to support the vision of the man of god don't sit and see things are moving in the wrong direction and you are there you are seated no we are there to support the work of the ministry we are there to support the servant of god do something start something maybe you don't know you you don't have any uh department at this time but there is something you can think about and start it mm. and when you start it will grow mm. people will support you when they see there is something in you you've started something they know you have a a vision they will support your vision mm. so you are there you are a pastor's wife don't sit 
do something, start somewhere, start anywhere with whatever little thing you have. And may God bless you and may God expand your ministry. Amen. Thank Amen. you very much. Judy, I would like you to give your uh, closing remark as we come to the end of this program. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. As we come to the close of this program, I want to echo the words of our guest, Eve. You are there, you are a pastor's wife. As you support your man of God, don't just sit and wait to be given, especially when it comes to money. Look for something, empower yourself, and support the work of God to be able to give even when the others are giving in church. And through that, you will enjoy doing ministry. You will find flow in ministry. It will not be a burden to you, but you will find flow doing it and you will enjoy ministry. May the Lord bless you so much. Thank you so much. We are always glad to have you in this program. God bless you. See you next time. Thank you very much, Judy. Thank you, our viewer. Thank you for keeping it at JCC TV. This is the station that brings you the uncompromised gospel, that brings you uh, answers to questions that are in your life. And we want to thank our partners who keep us on air. Continue supporting us. You can call that number. If you, are, you have any question, if you have got any comments, or any uh, contribution to the things that we have been saying, you can uh, text us and we will be so glad to get feedback from you. And before we close today, I would like to pray for you. Maybe you are there, you are going through some challenge. You have been listening to us and you are saying, I am going through a difficult time. And maybe what we are saying, you don't even know how to go about it, to come out of where you are. God is able. Is able to take you out, is able to hold your hand and walk with you through that challenge. So I would like to pray with you and for you so that God can help you. Our help comes from the Lord. Our help does not come from the east or from the west. David said, I will look up unto the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. So your help comes from the Lord. And he says, we pray, we ask, we knock. So I want us to bow our heads. We are going to pray and we are going to trust God that is going to meet you at the point of your need. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our viewer. We thank you because you know what they are going through. You know their challenges. You know their trials and their temptations. Lord, I pray that you stretch your hand, your hand which is not short. It can touch them wherever they are. Touch them and bring a solution to that challenge, a solution to that problem, and a way of escape through that from that temptation. We thank you, dear Lord. I pray that they will have a testimony that, Lord, you have done it for them. And they will arise and rejoice and continue serving you in joy. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you. We will see you next time. program is made possible courtesy of the Wilfred Lai Partners. For prayer, inquiry, and partnership, contact us on 0800-000-898 or send SMS to 23378 and our team of counselors will help you.